Hi friends, how you doing? I'd like to talk to you today about a subject that's close to my heart and I'm calling it God's financial harvest. God's financial harvest because God is looking to harvest financially through his people. Are you going to be one of them? You know, the Apostle Paul writes about giving and receiving over in 2 Corinthians quite a bit. He talks about generosity, cheerful giving, uh, but there's something more there if you keep studying it and you get revelation here on what I'm saying. There's something more there that God wants people to see because, you know, uh, over in the uh book of Romans in the motivational gifts, giving is one of the motivational gifts, giving, being a giver. And um, uh, Paul says over there in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, that there's a grace for giving, but there's also a grace for receiving. Now, grace for giving is, it creates a very generous person, but a grace for receiving there's in a, when you have a grace for receiving, then you have an ability from God and anointing to uh, a favor and of grace to make money. Now enter God's uh, promises in Deuteronomy about the blessing and the blessing coming on you. And he says, don't you know that it's I to give you power to get wealth. So God has a grace for you to create wealth. And it excites me it, because Debbie and I have this grace and we know where we're going with this. But I'm also a teacher, Debbie's a teacher, and we teach this and this is close to our hearts. Now, some people think it's carnal to te teach about giving and money all the time, but you know, we're doing it and we're not going anywhere. Because God is wanting to do a lot for the lost. But the believers have to quit playing church. And they have to leave their comfortability zone. And they have to dig in to the kingdom and the revelations of God that are over giving and receiving. So that God can create wealth in those believers. Because, you know, if there's mighty moves of the Spirit coming in, there are. It's been prophesied. It's in scripture. We're in the covenant of greater glory. And um, God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And we're going to see that in our lifetime. But you know, every ministry going out requires uh, funds to go. And people, someone has to send them. So God has to send an army out. But he almost has to send, create an equally big army or bigger of people that sin and people that catch a revelation from Jesus and from Paul from the Old Covenant because there's much to be shared and seen in the Old Covenant about giving and receiving and gaining wealth. God made so many men wealthy. He made Abraham wealthy. And Abraham was really wealthy. You know, here's, here's what it says about Abraham. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. That's found in Genesis 13 too. I suggest you write that out and you put your name in there. Uh, because I'm going to show you in a minute some scriptures that indicate why that anointing God put on Abraham because when he put that anointing on him, that Abraham was a magnet for wealth and riches. And he got, he trained it into his nephew, Lot. And the two of them were getting so much property and herds and cattle and servants. They couldn't even live in the same valley. They, I mean, they had to separate ways and one had to take his wealth over there and the other had to take his wealth over there. And I don't want to go into that story right now, but what I'm saying is you can see now also uh, Abraham's son, 
and grandson got super wealthy. Uh, Isaac, Jacob, and God gave them ways of productivity like the ring-staked cattle with spots for Jacob. And Isaac, he became wealthy. Isaac and Rebekah. And then, interestingly, it isn't just three generations. There's a fourth generation, Joseph. Now look what Joseph did. He became the richest man of his time as second, second in charge of all of Egypt. And well, it just an opulent wealth. But he did that through God and God's ways and listening to God and obeying God. All these men did that. See, Abraham was God's friend. I want to read it to you one more time because this will hit some when I read it again, like maybe it didn't a minute ago. And Abram, Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And other things too. Look at Job. He got wealthy twice. And they say Job was a contemporary of Abraham. And so just settle that in your spirit that God is looking for people and, and, you know, don't be religious and, or listen to religious people that say, you're being carnal to talk about money. No, no. There's an office of the teacher in Ephesians for the building up of the saints for the work of the ministry. I'm a teacher. Debbie's a teacher. We're teachers. And therefore, part of our job as teachers five-fold teachers to to build up the saints of God for the work of the ministry. And one of the biggest uh, things in the work of the ministry is sending, sending people out with the gospel and helping them pay their bills, helping them build another thing on their church, another wing or something if they're busting out of it, uh, blessing the churches blessing the evangelists, blessing the prophets, the apostles, keeping them alive, helping them to live, helping them to pay their bills. And there's there's big need for people. You won't hear very many people talking like I'm talking right here in church because it seems like a lot of pew sitters that are going to churches, they can only hear uh, exactly 12 minutes on their watch of giving talk. And if you go over that, they might not be in the service next Sunday. And you see that there has to be a uh, shift in people's thinking that talking about finances in God and his kingdom and revelations about it is for our benefit. It's not to put one's hand in, one's, in another's pocket or purse. It's for our benefit. It's for because God blesses his big givers so well. There's so, there's so much left in your hands. And so glory to God. So you, your dreams come to pass with God when you're his giving servant. So let's, let's, let's look into Abraham a minute. All right. Let's, um, let's see how this all ties into Abraham. And I'm, I'm going here to, to uh, Galatians 3, and um, I want to read Galatians 3, verse, oh, I've got them written down here, 8 and 9. Um, and the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentile, Gentiles by faith, Preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you will all the nations be blessed. In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. See, maybe even since I started talking, your faith has grown. Imagine if you heard messages like this every day, all the time. Um, your faith would just keep growing and growing, and then you act on it. You become generous. You give. God's watching. God has every gift you've ever given recorded, written down, 
He knows. He knows exactly what you've been doing. And um, so glory to God. Um, let me read on verses uh, 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Well, that's what Abraham was enjoying. He had a removal of the curse because he was a friend of God. So the curse of poverty, the curse of lack, was not on him. The curse of debt, these things were not on him because of his friendship with God. And he was around God and God was talking to him. He's receiving the anointing, just like you're receiving right now as I'm talking. You're receiving the anointing. And so, uh, but Jesus did something bigger than happened in the old covenant for Abraham. Jesus did that act of the cross of Calvary, which gives you your new births, but it also gives you the abundant life. You get the abundant life. And not only the abundant life, but you get freedom from sin that drags you down and stops your uh, potential in life. And uh, so now if you're watching me, somehow you're watching me and you've never been born again and received Jesus Christ, receive him today. Just receive him. Just say, Lord Jesus, say this after me. Lord Jesus, I receive you. Come into my heart. Live big through me. Forgive me of all sin. From this day forth, I will walk with you forever. In Jesus' name. There. Doesn't that feel better? Glory to God. That the blessing of Abraham, now Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being cursed for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So I'm a Gentile, but now I'm one of God's chosen people because I am of Christ and in Christ and thereby blessed with faithful Abraham, blessed with believing Abraham. So just what Abraham access, had access to. And I, that means we are Abraham's seed. We are Abraham's seed. And I'm going to read that in a minute. In fact, I'll just go there and finish it up. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Those that just said the sinner's prayer to receive Christ three minutes ago, you are now sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as of you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now you're in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, here's the big verse I've been building to get to. Let this go deep in your heart like a revelation. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are heirs. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Now, now we have some understanding. Now we can go back and look at a few things. Um, Abraham's seed, natural seed on the earth, was Isaac, son, Jacob, grandson, Joseph, great-grandson. These three generations behind him, they followed him in wealth. They followed him in blessing. They followed Abraham. What did they follow Abraham in? And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. These people, they call them the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They call them the patri patriarchs. What were those three generations below Abraham? What were they? They were Abraham's seed. Now, God's given a great gift because he says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So you know that promise in Deuteronomy 8 that I quoted a while ago where God said, don't you know that it is I that you have given you the power to create wealth? That's in the blessing 
in Deuteronomy, which is an announcement to the seed of Abraham, what they've been given, plenteous in goods, and uh, the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You, you should be doing well. Your faith should be, have you doing well in business, in your job. Maybe you're on a salary, but you know, it's time to get a raise. You can ratchet it up and do put more output out of your position as an employee and be worthy of a better raise. Or uh, get your resume over in LinkedIn and get a uh, better job, a better paying job. Glory to God. Doors will open for you if you're a generous giver. Because I'm telling you that these men of old were generous givers. And Paul said, this is how you tap into the grace. It's in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. That there, he talks about a group of people that had a grace of giving. There was a grace upon them. And then he talks about them having a grace of receiving. And so a grace to give and a grace to receive. Now you can see why I'm talking about when I title this God's financial harvest, because God is wanting to create a big financial harvest in the earth and more than he's currently getting. God is a husbandman. That means a gardener. So everything to God is much about seed and harvest, seed time and harvest. So what I want you to see is that you can walk into a greater grace over this matter. That, like I said, there's need all around you. There's the poor. We can show generosity to the poor. We can show generosity to our pastors and to people in our church that we know if they're hurting or not, to those in our family. We can show grace to those um, of, of love and giving to um, evangelists, to works of God that are coming up that we know about. And, you know, then that in that, that there's that Corinthian scripture that comes into play, that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have all sufficiency for every good work. Now, what it would be, what would it be like if every day you could give a generous donation and not small ones big ones what would that what would that be like and you did it every day because if you're gonna have you could do that if you were receiving all sufficiency for every good work but with God there's a faith issue you have to have faith and one the biggest way to show faith and to to give to receive is to have faith to give knowing that God will have to replace what you give. So there's a sacrificial act there. But anyway, I wanted you to see that giving and receiving is a ministry. There's a ministry of giving. It's one of the motivational gifts of the Holy Spirit spoke of in Romans. And so there's a great need out there. And if you can tap in and become the answer to financial needs, God will notice. He writes it down. He looks for ways to position you. Now, what happens? Uh, God is into giving you ideas, strategies, uh, inventions, uh, different, different ways to make money, different ways to be positioned in this earth. And you are, uh, you are someone God. And then listen to God. Because you have to be in position, but you have to hear God's plan when it comes along. And the Holy Spirit will just speak it into you. It could be a simple thing. It could be a little business you start right out of your home or something. But glory to God. I want to pray for you and I want to uh, have you agree with me that you get in position by God to be to get receive grace for giving and to receive grace for receiving and that there is no lack in your life no debt no poverty but blessing and abundance hallelujah 
So I just, Father, I just pray over them that are watching this video, that they move into greater abundance and that they move into a greater sense of being a giver and being a greater, uh, being a great, having a greater sense of being a wealthy, uh, God serving steward of God's abundance so that, and into that special relationship with you, Father, in heaven, where you are the husbandman of their affairs. You are the, the gardener. The, you are the one who is sowing and reaping through them. Father, it is your financial harvest, and we see it that way. So everything we have is yours. We love you, Father. We thank you for this now. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening.